Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. My next guest, John McGuire, started his career in Ticketmaster, but has recently launched Trip Admit, a booking software company which aims to boost revenues for tour operators, activity providers, airlines and hotels. John, as I mentioned, Ticketmaster acted as the springboard for your career. Yeah, I, I suppose I've been in the travel and ticketing business for for coming up on 25 years at this stage. It's in the early part of my career. I suppose my first real real taste of online and real taste of, of, of ticketing was, was Ticketmaster. I was brought in to look after their website. This is in the day when I remember the... I remember the, the, you know, in the early days when we sold nothing online in a day. And I remember the first day where we sold 10 tickets and we pretty much had a party to celebrate. And I remember the first day we sold 100. And then shortly afterwards, I remember the first day we sold 100,000 online. Um, and yeah, it was, it's, I suppose I was, I was there from, from the early days of the internet. It's moving on from, from Ticketmaster. I, uh, I joined the travel industry and essentially got hooked on the travel industry with Aer Lingus. And it was a case of an Aer Lingus I was brought in to roll out the digital marketing for Aer Lingus across Europe. So, John, what is TripAdmit and how does it work? So, TripAdmit, what we are is we're an end-to-end solution for the tours and activities industry. So, essentially, what that means is, is that we provide a reservation system to the tour and activity providers at one end of the market. Uh, so, that's to power bookings through their own websites. Um, but also we connect out to third parties. So if they want to sell to the online travel agents like you know, Expedia or TripAdvisor, et cetera, uh, we can connect them via our reservation system. And then at the other side, we have a solution for distribution partners, such as airlines and hotels, to sell tours and activities to their customer bases. So in the same way that the airlines would sell hotels and car hire to their, to their passengers, this would be for airlines to earn ancillary revenue from tours and activities. So, John, ideally, who are your target market? Essentially, we have, we have two sides of the market. Our primary target markets are the tour and activity providers that either don't have the ability, which the majority don't, to sell online. Um, but also there are the venues and attractions as well um, that require booking systems because the pandemic has... As I suppose it, it has changed in one way how how people how people plan in advance. And then on the other side of the market, we have our distribution partners, and our, our primary market there would be the airlines. And John, what was involved in getting the airlines on board? First of all, is, is education. So with regard to the airlines, the airlines would look at the ancillary revenue that they're already earning from you know from hotels, from car hire, from bags and seats, etc. And it's about educating the airlines about the tours and activities industry because, albeit they, they understand the industry, but they you know, don't tend to understand how big the industry is. So, for example, the tours and activities industry is bigger than car hire package holidays and cruises combined. Um, also, there's a, a perceived, uh, that it's, it, it's perceived that it's a low-value product. While in actual fact, it's a case of that you know, people don't uh, go and do an activity generally by themselves. It's they go and tend to go in in in, in small groups. Um, and then also the last piece of the puzzle is that the, the airlines would look at us and, and wonder, in comparison to their other ancillary partners, uh, you know, whether they can actually earn significant revenues from us. And, and when you outline that based on their passenger numbers and that, it, it, it generally tends to surprise them. So the first piece is education. And then the second piece is to be able to show them that an actual solution exists to do this. Because the technology in this sector, as I, you know, as I said previously, it's, it's one of the last sectors to digitize in, in the travel industry. It didn't exist in the format that the, the airlines required up until very recently. And of course, the tourism sector has been at a complete standstill since quarter one of 2020. But do you think that this will strengthen the demand for trip admit when international travel resumes? Certainly, it's I and we've I suppose we've already we've already witnessed uh, some of us. What we did was we you know 
for the pandemic is we went out and we raised investment, but also we went out and built out, we took the time to build out our technology. But with regard to the on the demand side, yes, it was completely subdued in the first half of the pandemic. However, with the arrival of the of the vaccines, especially in quarter four uh, of 2020, that's when we began to see, I suppose, a lot more um, inbound inquiries. And essentially, when we came back after Christmas, so quarter one, so quarter one this year, uh, we were, you know, the we could we could see as every single week went by that our, you know, the number of clients we were securing, uh, the number of inquiries we were getting, uh, the responses to the. Uh, to the activity that we were putting out was going up and up and up to the point where last week was was our best week to date. Um, and it's, it's a case of what we have witnessed is that the pandemic has changed consumer behaviour and will change consumer behaviour going forward. So tourism activities were an industry that was slow to digitisation. However, now what we're seeing is the fact that people will plan in advance more uh, people will want to know, you know, is this a, a is this a, a, a COVID friendly um, tour activity that I'm, I'm going on? They'll want to know about hygiene measures. They'll want to make sure that everything is booked and planned in advance. They won't want to stand in a queue anymore to get tickets. And John, I know that you went out and raised funding just nine months into the startup journey. Now there is a catch twenty two with startup businesses, of course, because when is the right time to raise investment? And some will say that if you raise investment too early, it can be a mistake because you have to give away so much of a percentage shareholding in the business itself. Talk to us about your thinking behind raising funding when you did, and why that was so important. From our perspective, we we look at raising investment in in, in two different parts. There's the early investment that you will raise, which generally comes from from family and friends, but then you move towards professional investment. And it is a case of, uh, it all comes down to, to looking, at, looking at your cash flow, looking at, um, looking at the, the burn rate of cash, essentially, and then you know, the, the working out what you need to deliver your business plan. Obviously, when a pandemic happens in the middle of all of this it was a case of for us we did change our investment planning and most people would say that it's it was the case of this you would reduce it but instead what we what we did at the beginning of the pandemic was we said look sales are going to be depressed for you know six months 12 months etc revenue will be depressed for the same period um so therefore we focused on building out our product. To build out our product, we required um, extra developers. And then also, it's a case of to pay for the extra developers, we require additional investment. So during during the pandemic, we raised half a million euros, um, with half of that coming from Enterprise Ireland. Um, and, you know, which is, I suppose, <laughs> it's probably the most challenging piece of investment we'll ever raise, as in going out and and... You know, it's a raising investment for a travel technology company in the middle of a pandemic. Certainly, certainly not easy, as you can imagine. And John, what's the ambition for the business over the next five years from an internationalisation perspective? Our primary focus will be on Europe because it's obviously that's our, our, our home territory. Um, we're also focusing at the moment on, on South America um, and the Middle East um, and but ultimately, it's our, our product range is, is global in nature. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was John McGuire from TripAdmit. And I wish John every success in reaching the next milestone with his business. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.